Are we on? Yes, we are. Okay, let's, let's, let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for um, your wonderful presence this morning. Thank you that you are here. Thank you that you are moving. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you do things that we don't expect. Thank you that you um, work in our hearts and you, you do a work that only you can do. And we're so grateful for your, the peace that comes with your presence, Lord. And Father, we thank you for your, your word this morning. And Lord, I pray that we would, um, Lord, we want to receive from, from you today. Lord, I, I want to submit myself to you. I pray that you'd use me to speak today. I pray, God, for hearts that are wide open to receive from you. I pray that as we go into your word, that we would come to it with much uh, expectation, ready to receive from um, not only your, your, your written word, but the living word today in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so if you have, if you have your Bible, you can take it out or your device. Um, it would be good if you can follow with me. You can turn to John chapter 5, and uh, we're going to look at uh, verse 1 to, to 15. So we've been camping out in the, in the book of John, and um, today we're going to move into John chapter 5, like I said. And in John 5, it, uh, uh, we, we see a, a rising hostility to, towards Jesus. And um, what caused hostility was actually the, the miracles that Jesus performed, which is quite ironic, right? And isn't it amazing how people always react differently to the supernatural, right? You get those that are like, woohoo, and you get those that are maybe resistant, and that's what Jesus experienced. He experienced resistance. And so in today's talk, I want to, uh, uh, we're going to start with the first miracle in John chapter 5. And that is the healing of the man at the pool of Bethesda. So let, let's read the text. The text should, up, should be up behind me. It says, Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for a feast of the Jews. Now there is in Jerusalem near the sheep gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades or porches. Here a great number of, of disabled people used to lie. The blind, the lame, the paralyzed. And one who was there had, be, one, one who was there had been an, an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in that condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, he replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm getting in, someone else goes, goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mats, and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and he walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. And so the Jews said to the man who had been healed, it is the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mats. Bunch of dummies, eh? <laughs> but he replied, The man who made me well said to me, Pick up your mats and walk. So they asked him, Who is this fellow who told you to pick it up and walk? The man who was healed had no idea who it was, for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. Later Jesus found him at the temple, and, um, and said to him, actually, I'm, I'm going to stop there because that last part is irrelevant, irrelevant for this message. So Jesus went up to, to where? To Jerusalem for one of the Jewish feasts. And, and while he was there, he met a, a man that was paralyzed who lay beside the pool of Bethesda. And um, I want to show you um, the pool. It's, that's, okay, that, that's what the pool of Bethesda looks like today. So the, 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 the site was actually lost for many, many years. I think it was, uh, it was about 20 years ago, maybe several years ago. The site was rediscovered, and uh, you can see where they've done the excavation, and uh, they've uncovered the Pool of Bethesda at the bottom. And so public pools like this one were, were really common in, in Roman cities at that, at that time. They were massive. They say they were about the size of, of a football field, or let's say a soccer field, and they were about 20 feet deep. So these are major, major uh, pools. So the, the, let's go to the next slide. So that's what the pool, the, the pool of Bethesda would have looked like at that time. So it had four, they call it colonnades or, or porches. I think we, we're familiar with the term porch. 
You can see the porches going around. And then in the middle, you had, you had a porch that divided the two. And they say that was probably to divide, uh, separate the genders, male and female. So John tells us that um, many disabled people used to um, go to um, this pool. And they went there for two reasons. First of all, and the first reason is pretty obvious, was for the shade. You can imagine if you were lying under that porch, you would have had some, some lack of shade. Eh? The other one is that uh, many folk believe that an angel would come down into the pool and stir the waters, and after the water was stirred, the first person that climbed into the pool would be healed. That's what many, many people believed. But that's actually not what the Bible teaches. You can go look in your, your Bible, go look in your translation, it'll be quite interesting. So in, in, uh, in, in translations like the, the New King James or the, the NASB, you will find verse 4 in your Bible. If you have NIV, you'll see that verse 4 is omitted. And there is, there's a reason for that, because um, in verse 4 it says that the angel would come down into the water and stir the waters, but in, in uh, many modern translations, that verse is excluded because that verse was probably not in the original manuscripts. That's why it's left out. So I actually only discovered that now while I was studying the text. I always believed that the angel came down and stirred the waters, when in actual fact, that's not true. So people have different opinions about this pool. And some people believe that the angel came down into the waters. Some people say that that was just um, superstition or legend. Some say that the, the water would, would rise and fall because they, uh, they, they said that uh, water would sometimes be released from reservoirs around the city and that would cause the, the water to rise and fall. So I don't know for sure. But what I do know for sure is that a great miracle took place that day and that was because of the presence of Jesus. And that's the most important thing. Amen. So what do we know about this, this man? Well, he was paralyzed. For 38 years. That's a long time. So he was paralyzed longer than many people lived in ancient times. And he had been waiting a long, long time for healing. He had tried to get better by himself, but that clearly wasn't working. This was a man that was desperate. This was a man who was out of options. This was a man who needed breakthrough. And I think that many of us can identify with this man. Some of us are, figuratively speaking, paralyzed. We are waiting next to the pool. We are waiting for something to happen. We are waiting for breakthrough. We cannot do the thing that we want to do. We are paralyzed. So think about the, the person who, who needs healing, right? They go to the doctor, and the doctor says, there's nothing more that I can do for you. That person is paralyzed in a sense. Well, how about the, the person who has an addiction to drugs or whatever, alcohol? They've tried to beat the habit on their own, but they can't. They're paralyzed. What about the person who is trying to, you think about our, the, our, our economy at the moment, you think about the person who is trying to find work, and they've sent out their CVs to every company they know, but they just can't find employment. That person is paralyzed. What about the, the person whose who's marriage is struggling? They've gone for counseling. They've, they've tried everything they can to fix it, but it's just getting worse. They're paralyzed. And so let me ask you, are you in that posi position right now? Are you paralyzed? Are you stuck? Do you need breakthrough? <laughs> Well, if so, this message is for you. Let's go to verse 3. So we look at this picture over here. So at the pool, there, were, there would have been many um, disabled people, um, lame, blind, sick. And out of, that, out of that big crowd, Jesus heals one person, one man. I find that, I think that's interesting. Right, because you always picture Jesus ministering to the crowds, but if you read the Gospels carefully, very often he picked out one person, right? And so it wasn't the man who approached Jesus, the man, the, Jesus approached the man. Right? Jesus goes to him, he speaks to him, he heals him, and then in verse 14, 
he actually goes, he goes back to the man. He goes to find him in the temple. And so it's, 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 there's no doubt in my mind that Jesus pursued this man. And I think that it was the, 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 helpless, uh, the helpless condition of this man that drew Jesus to him. This reminds me of the, the Lord of the Rings movies. Have you, has anybody watched Lord of the Rings? Anybody, has anybody read, read the book? Okay, shame for you. Um, no, I'm just joking. So um, it was a very popular movie when I was a, a, a teenager. And they were jolly long. They were like, phew, like two and a half hours, three hours long. So in the movie, there's um, a character named Samwise Gamgee. He's the guy at the bottom, and that's his friend Frodo uh, across his shoulders. And of course, Frodo had the task of, you know, he had the ring. Okay, and he had to get, he had to get the ring to, was it, was it Mordor, something like that. And in the, you know, there's a trilogy. So in the third movie, at the end of the third movie, they're almost at their destination. But at that point, Frodo is, he's lacamuch. I mean, he's just, he's tired. And he's now, be, he's, he's actually become corrupted by the, the power of the ring. So Frodo can't carry on. And Samwise Gamgee says something so beautiful to his friend. He says, I can't, I can't carry it for you, but I can carry you. You know, God can speak through movies, eh? In the same way, God cares for you. Eh? He's like that, that Samwise Gam, Gamgee. God cares for you. You know, when, you, when you're in a place where you need breakthrough, where you're desperate, where you're at your wit's end, you might feel like, you know what, God doesn't care about me. Why would he leave me in this, in this situation? When in actual fact, God cares for you, and he's there to carry you. And that's point number one this morning. If, if you need breakthrough, know that God is for you, and God is there for you. So this man had been waiting 38 years for something to happen. That's a long time. Are you waiting? It might not be 38 years, but are you waiting? And I went to the, I went to the mechanic this past week, and I had to wait. And um, I got there early in the morning, 7.30 a.m. And so when I got there, they, they took the car upstairs where the technicians work on the car, and I took it to the agents. And I waited downstairs in the lounge while they worked in my car. And, you know, for the first few hours, it was okay. Like, you know, I'm a big coffee guy, and they had free coffee. So that kept me happy for a while. But you can only drink so many cups of coffee. And when it got to about 3 p.m., I was done. And I didn't take any food with me because I wasn't supposed to be there the, the entire day. I was supposed to go there, then go somewhere else. And I was, what do you call, hangry. Do you know what hangry is? When you're so hungry, you're hangry. And there's no shop nearby. I'm like starving. So anyway, I think I eventually went down to the BP down the road and I bought some Doritos. You know, I'm gluten intolerant. I bought some Doritos chips and a, and a Coke or something. So anyway, you know, by the time I got to like 3 o'clock, I was done. I was like, I want to go home now. And, um, you know, maybe, they, maybe you feel like that right now. Maybe you feel like, you know what, I'm done. It's glad. I'm done waiting. Lord, when? Do any of you talk to God like that? I, I do sometimes. You know, God actually likes honesty. If you read the book of Psalms, I mean, I mean, the, the, the psalmists are very honest with God, by the way. It's okay to be honest with God. Come on. Hey? It's a, it's a relationship to say. I mean, maybe you're just in that place where you just, you, you're done, like I say. But you know what? There's hope for you. There's hope. This man, he still ha had hope after 38 years. That's incredible. And his hope was in the wrong place. His hope was in people. He was hoping that, that some, some person would come along and pick him up and chuck him in the water. Our hope as believers, we have a sure hope because our hope is in God. And God is for you. The Bible says in Psalm 18, the Lord is for me. In the book of Romans, it says, if God is for us, who is against us? So know that if you're waiting for breakthrough, God is for you. 
Uh, keep on hoping. Keep on expecting. Isn't it amazing how breakthrough often comes at the most unexpected times? Eh? Suddenly, poof, it just kicks in. Because God's timing is different from our, from our timing. Let's move on. So in verse 6, Jesus asks the man, do you want to get well? Isn't that a strange question? If you were sick for 38 years, you would say, like, duh, I want to get well. But it was actually a very sincere question because you know what? Jesus knew that not every, uh, he knew that every person, or not every person, wants to actually get better. You know that? So this man, he probably earned an income by begging. And so if, if, he, if he got his breakthrough, he would have to give up, give up his income. Some people don't want to give up the something for the breakthrough. Are you with me? It sounds weird, but it's true. So let me give you an example. So, you know, sometimes when, when people have been in a condition for a long, long time, let's say they've been, they've been sick for a long time, or they've been struggling with an allergy for a long time, like I've got this um, gluten thing, you know, or maybe it's a, a mental illness, or maybe it's just not being promoted. You know, just you've just been overlooked your, 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 for a long, long time. You can actually start identifying yourself with that condition. You see yourself as your your sickness. You see yourself as your struggle. You see yourself as your 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 condition. And what you've got to do is, if you want breakthrough, you need to be willing to to shed your that identity, which is a false identity, and adopt your true identity, which is an identity in Jesus Christ. But some people, they, they love their weakness, and they actually want to remain there. I know it sounds strange, but I've seen it. Another one is that people don't want, don't want to give up their self-sufficiency. They don't want to admit that they cannot do it on their own. You with me? I mean, this, this perilous guy, he, he could not do it by himself. And so, so some people, are, they're still determined to get into the water when it's stirred. And it's, instead of saying, you know what, Jesus, I can't do it. I need you. That leads me to point number two today. If you need breakthrough, you need to want it. It must be your, your desire. And so do you want it? Do you want, do you want breakthrough? Or have you given up? Maybe you're saying, you know what, it's been like this forever and ever, and it will always be like this. And I want to encourage you to hope again, to desire breakthrough like the paralyzed man. Now if you look at um, the, the man's answer, it was a mixture of hope and conditions, terms and conditions. Because when Jesus asked him, do you want to get well, he, he didn't say, yes, Jesus. Okay? What did he say? He said, he said, I have no one to help me get into the pool. And when I try and get in, someone jumps in ahead of me. And what's he doing? He's making excuses. Hey, think about it. The answer to his problem is standing right in front of him, and he's making excuses. And how many of you know that excuses don't produce breakthrough? In fact, excuses can keep us in a situation longer than we're supposed to be. <laughs> so, for example, you, you might say to yourself, you know what, I want to get fit, but. I think we've all been there, right? I want to, I want to get closer to Jesus, but I just don't have the time. I want my marriage to work, but I need to stop this habit, but I would like to start a business, but I believe, but. And what I'm going to say to you is going to sound pretty funny, but your but can block your breakthrough. Not your bum, eh? Your but can block your breakthrough. You know, Moses had excuses. God wanted to use him. But he made excuses. It's when he stopped making excuses that, that God began to use him and he became one of the greatest Old Testament prophets. So if you've been making excuses, if you've been saying, but, if, maybe, 
You need to change it to, you know what, I can, God can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Take the limits of God. And so that's point number three today. Get your butt out of the way. I'm sure you're going to remember that one. So this man, he actually thought that Jesus was going to put him in the pool. But that's what, he didn't do that. So Jesus had every intention of helping the man, but he was not going to do it in the way that the man expected. It was out of the box. And that's point number four today. Don't put God in a box, because your breakthrough may very well come in a way that you least expect it. There's a true story about a pastor who was, um, went to go pray for a paralyzed girl. Her name was Natia. And this girl was paralyzed from the, the waist down. And this pastor went to pray for her several times. I think it was like three times, but there was, there was, no, there was no healing. In fact, when he went to go pray for the fourth time, the, the, the paralysis had increased. She was then paralyzed from the neck down, and she thought that she was going to die. But then God impressed a, a date and a time on the pastor's heart. It was 3.30 3 p.m. on February the 11th. I, I f- forget what year it was. And so on that date, the, the pastor went with a few of his friends to a house, and they prayed on February the 11th. And suddenly, while everybody was crying and praying, the God's power touched her, and she was miraculously healed, and she jumped out of the bed, and she knelt on the floor. And it was at that moment that the pastor looked at his watch, and it was 3.30 p.m. on February the 11th. And so the point is that Natia and the paralyzed man, they expected God to move according to their time, according to their schedule, according to their, their own preconceived ideas. But how many of you know that God often works outside of the box? Right? His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Somebody, somebody once said, Faith is to believe in God to do the impossible, not to assume how he will do it. Let's move on. So in verse 8, Jesus, um, we're coming to land quite soon. Jesus tells the man, get up, pick up, walk. Think about that. Get up, pick up, walk. Those are all actions. What's he doing? He's asking the man to do something. He's, he's saying, I want you to get into position for your breakthrough. Right? And I find that a lot of folk, they pray and they, they expect the breakthrough. They expect the, 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 the blessing. But they do that, they, they, they do that while, while standing still. Right? They expect the, the breakthrough to, to fall on their lap. And God can do that. Listen, God is a big God. God can choose to bring breakthrough to whoever he wants to. But when I look at the Word and if I look at my own life, what I see is that God often asks us to get ourselves in the right position for the breakthrough to come. So let me give you some some examples from the Bible. So before Abraham could become the father of many nations, he first had to position himself where? In In Canaan. What about Esther? Esther could only save the Jews after she had positioned herself in the king's palace. What about Zacchaeus, short Zacchaeus? He literally had to reposition himself. Right? He couldn't see Jesus of the crowds, so he had to ch- shift his position and climb up the tree so that he could meet Jesus. So I hope you understand what I'm saying to you today, that many of the breakthroughs come when we are Um, in the right position. So let me give you some other practical examples. So, right, you, you you can't expect to get out of debt until you've positioned your spending habits to pay off the debt. Are you are you with me? Right? You can't expect to get healthy until you've positioned your eating habits. You can't get over a long term addiction until you've Position yourself around some people that can encourage you and keep you accountable. Are you with me? 
Like I said, God is a big God, and if He wants to bring breakthrough where you are right now, He can do that. God, lo- God loves us, He is good, and He loves to bless us. But a lot of blessings come when we are, or, or breakthroughs come when we are in the position that God wants us to be in. So it's like the game of football. I know we don't watch football in, in South Africa, but um, it's the best um, example that I could think of. So in the game of football, you have a quarterback, right? And he's normally the, the, the star in the football team. And the main goal of the quarterback is to, is to, is to advance his team forward by throwing the ball to the person that's in the best position. Those guys that receive the ball, they're called wide receivers. And so, um, does, does the, the quarterback throw the ball where he wants to? Does he throw it haphazardly? No. He waits for, the, for his teammate to be in the right position. And Jesus, he is like our quarterback. The football is the breakthrough and we are the wide receivers. And so God has your, your breakthrough in his hand, but he, he might just be waiting for you to be in the right position for him to release the ball. And so let me ask you, have you positioned yourself to catch what you've been praying for? Right? I'm going to close it with one final story. So all of you should know um, uh, Margaret Thatcher. She was the, the British um, Prime Minister. And she has a son, uh, who had a son named Mark. And Mark disappeared while he was doing a race in, in, the, in, in, in a desert in Africa. And after he got lost, um, Margaret, who was obviously one of the most powerful people in the world, in the world at that time, she, uh, she stopped what she was doing and she focused on finding her son. And so they had um, a major operation going, and they went in there, and they looked for Mark, and they found Mark. They found his vehicle first, then they found him, and they rescued him from that situation. We have a much more powerful um, person on our side, and that's Jesus. And his words contain life and the ability to change any situation that we come across. He can bring breakthrough in a moment. God can rescue you. He can deliver you. And God can advance you. And so in closing today, I want you to, if that's you, if you need breakthrough, I want you to, to um, just, express that, just express that to God today. Right? You know, when Jesus healed the man with the, the withered hand, he said, stretch out your hand. And it was only after he stretched out his hand that the man was healed. You know, when we, when we say to God, you know what, I want the breakthrough. I desire the breakthrough. You are releasing faith, and God responds to faith. Amen? That's how he works. And so just in this closing moment, I want to say to you that if that's you, won't you, won't you position yourself right now to receive from the Lord? You're saying, that's me. Lord, I'm, I'm feeling stuck. Lord, I need breakthrough. I've been waiting a long, long time for this thing to happen. And I believe it's of you. Will you please, will you bring the breakthrough? Amen. Can we pray? Let's pray. And before we pray, why don't you just take a, a moment and, and ask your, or reflect on the message. And ask yourself, well, do, do I need, do I need breakthrough? Is there an area of my life where I need breakthrough? And it could be anything. It could be your health. It could be, it could be anything. I gave you, you know, a bunch of examples in, in, in the message. Where do you need breakthrough in your life? Where are you feeling stuck? Like you, you can't advance. I actually feel like you need to um, take a step of faith this morning. 
If that's you, if you're saying, you know what, I need breakthrough, I want you to stand your feet. <laughs> Jesus asked the man, do you, do you want to get well? Is that you? The Lord is looking for a response. Is that you? When you, take it, when you stand in faith, you're saying, that's me. I need breakthrough in my life. I've been waiting for this thing for a long time. Lord, I've been trusting you for breakthrough. By you standing today, you're saying, Lord, I need this thing. I need breakthrough today. You know, it's okay to ask for breakthrough, right? Why did Jesus heal the, the paralyzed man? Because he, he hated seeing him in that, in that position or in that condition for that, for that amount of time. It was compassion that moved the heart of Jesus. And God has compassion for you, right? God is good. God is a God of love. And I think if anybody says that God um, loves to see us in a position where we are suffering, then they're crazy. <laughs> because that's, that's not my God. God is good. Amen? So why don't you, if, you, if you're sitting down, you can just, just extend your hand towards these people. We're going to trust God together. Amen. I want you. I want you guys. Just. Um, I want you to, just in your own words now. I want you to, just say to God, "I need breakthrough," and you fill in the blank. I need breakthrough in, this. Fill in the blank. You don't have to. Don't have to say it out loud for us all to hear. Just quietly where you are. You say, "Lord, I need breakthrough in fill in the blank." Amen. I know that Jesus is here. As Jesus stood by that paralytic, that paralytic he's, he's, stand, he's standing next to you today. With all the, the compassion and love in his heart for you. I feel like, I feel like there's some people today where it's, it's been such a long time where you're almost, you're almost angry. The frustration has, 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 has built up to such a point where maybe you're even resentful towards God. I just have a, just felt I should say that. You're saying, God doesn't care. Why would he allow me to go through this? But God says to you, I love you. <laughs> His ways are higher than our ways. And God often has a greater purpose that we cannot see with our natural eyes. Let's pray for these people. Father, I want to bring every single person before you that's standing here today. There might be some that are sitting, and it's okay. But Lord, we, they, they're standing today in faith, saying, Lord, they, they need breakthrough in whatever area that might be. Lord, you, you, you hear their prayer, you see their heart. You know what they're going through. Lord, you see their frustration, you, you see their, maybe perhaps even their anger. And that's okay, because you love them. Lord, we want to stand together today as a, a church family. We want to pray for breakthrough for these people. We want to pray, Lord, that they, would, that they won't be stuck where they are. Lord, we want, to, we want to pray that you would open up the doors. Open doors of, of opportunity for these people. Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that you are able. We ask for breakthrough. I feel like God just wants, to, uh, he wants you to receive right now. I saw the picture, we, there were many words this morning about the heart, and I have a sense that there might be somebody here today who's, you've been waiting so long that it, it might even have corrupted your heart. I don't know how else to put it. But you kind of feel like your heart is, is out of alignment. You might even feel a, a disconnect from Jesus because of, of the waiting period. And I feel like Holy, Holy Spirit wants to touch your heart today. 
I feel like he wants to even, even restore intimacy that, that might have been lost. So if that's you, just receive from him now. Receive from him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah 55, verse 8 says, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. I feel like God is saying, will you trust me? <laughs> will you trust me with this? Even, especially for those, that, those of you who don't have the answer to the question in your heart, will you trust Jesus? I feel like it's a holy moment, eh? Is it okay if we just be quiet for the next minute or two? I feel like the Lord always wants you to receive. Just receive from Holy Spirit now. I see you to see um I see water is washing over some of you, eh? And you know, you know, we've had some rain this morning, and what rain does is, is rain cleanses. It washes all the dust away and the dirt. I just see you like water, just washing over some of you, some of the heartache and the disappointment. Just in closing, I feel like um, I spoke about being in the in the right position. I really feel like there was a word from the Lord, and I feel like the Lord is is even in this moment, even today, as you as you go and as you leave this place, I feel like the Holy Spirit is going to give you. He's going to speak to you about that, um, and he's going to be speaking to you about about almost like a almost like steps that you that you can take to to reposition yourself. And I'm not going to try and try and interpret that, but that's just that's just a sense that I've got. Thank you, Lord. So, God, we want to thank you for this morning. We thank you for every person that's that's here. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your your wonderful word. Thank you that your word contains life. And thank you for your Holy Spirit who gives us understanding. Thank you that you speak through your word. And just as we we close today, Jesus. We just want to declare our love for you, Jesus. We thank you for our lives. We thank you for um, the breath that you've given us. We thank you for the gift of life. And we thank you for, for who you are. And we thank you for each other, our church family, that we can stand together in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you guys. There's tea and coffee on that side there. If anybody wants to come and chat, if you want to receive further prayer, um, come grab us in the front.